Let's talk about Linux as a normie, a pleb, a complete beginner. As a lifelong Windows user, I have always heard about the world of Linux, but never really took the plunge. So I decided it's time to change that, and I would appreciate your help. I'm putting together an old rig specifically to test out different Linux distros and see what works and what doesn't for me. What do I like? What do I not like? What's difficult for me to understand? I'd like to offer experienced Linux users a different perspective and hopefully inspire others who have never tried Linux before. If you've been around the Linux block a few times, drop your recommendations in the comments. What's your go-to distro? Which ones should I avoid like the plague? For the rest of this video, I'm going to break down what I've found so far about the most popular Linux distros, especially when it comes to the three big questions. Which ones are the most popular? Which ones are best for beginners? And which ones actually play nice with my NVIDIA drivers? I'm planning to use an old GeForce 760 in the rig, although I'm pretty sure my old Intel CPU has integrated graphics, so I can probably just yank the whole thing out of there if there's a distro I'm using that doesn't have native support for NVIDIA drivers. Everything I'm going to cover here is based on online research, so please take these conclusions with a grain of salt. Let's start with the heavy hitter, Ubuntu. If you've heard of Linux, you've probably heard of Ubuntu. It's one of the most popular distros out there, and for good reason. It's beginner friendly, has a massive community for support, and offers access to proprietary NVIDIA drivers. If you're dipping your toes into Linux for the first time, this seems like a solid option. I have noticed that Ubuntu's popularity has also led to some criticism. Some in the Linux community feel like it's too bloated or that it prioritizes ease of use over customization. For me though, that might not be a bad thing. I'm looking for something approachable, so if the problem is it's too easy to use and not customizable enough, probably gonna be okay with that. Next up, Pop OS. This one seems to be getting a lot of love recently, especially from gamers and developers. It's based on Ubuntu, so it's user-friendly, but it has a sleek, polished interface that's great for newcomers. Plus, they've gone the extra mile by offering a dedicated ISO for NVIDIA drivers, so I don't, in theory, even have to worry about installing them separately, which is good for me. I always forget it does that thing. My friend Alex actually recommended Pop! OS as the best starting point, so that's where I'm leaning right now. Check out the full interview I did with him if you want to see his perspective on the whole thing. And I really do appreciate his help. I would never have attempted the series if it weren't for him. But what do you think? Is he right or should I look elsewhere? Pop OS also gets bonus points for being designed with productivity in mind. It even has features like automatic window tiling, which could be a game changer if you're multitasking. Basically, I want to test this to see how it works as a Windows replacement, but at the end of the day, I'm mostly here for gaming. But the more Windows like this can be, no complaints here. Uh, next one I looked up was Linux Mint. This one's known for being super beginner friendly with an interface that feels very familiar if you're coming from Windows. It comes pre-installed with a lot of the software you'd likely need, which saves on some setup time. Mint's driver manager also makes installing proprietary NVIDIA drivers pretty straightforward, although that sounds to me as though it doesn't come out of the box the way a Pop! OS does, so that's something that I'm gonna have to learn along the way. Uh, one thing I heard about Mint is that it offers multiple desktop environments like Cinnamon, Mate, and XFCE, so you can choose which one fits your style. Apparently, if you're looking for options, this is a good one. For those who want to dabble in something a little more advanced, but still approachable, there is Manjaro. It's based on Arch Linux, but strips away the more complex setup steps. It's apparently also great for gaming, with automatic detection and installation of NVIDIA drivers. Plus, it has a rolling release model, so you're always up to date. Apparently, while it's designed to be pretty beginner-friendly compared to Arch, it still is more on the overwhelming side if you've never used Linux before. That said, the community support seems strong, so like any of these, you don't have to face these terrors alone. Uh, finally, Fedora. Backed up by Red Hat, it's a popular choice in both desktop and server environments. Clean, modern, and a little more focused on open source software. Okay, uh, apparently NVIDIA drivers are available through the RPM Fusion repositories. Whatever those are. Uh, but the setup isn't quite as beginner friendly as some of the other options. One thing that stands out about Fedora is its focus on cutting edge technology. If you're someone who likes to stay on the bleeding edge, apparently Fedora might be worth a look. But to someone like me who's just starting out, I don't think I'm probably going to try this one right off the bat. Maybe someday. And I'm sure I've missed some. There's Debian, OpenSUSE, OpenSUSE, Suisse, 
Suiz. Doran OS, the, the list goes on. But now I'm focusing on the ones that seem more accessible to me. If there's a hidden gem I've overlooked, please let me know in the comments. One thing I'm really excited about is seeing how these distros differ in terms of user experience. As someone who's used to the convenience of Windows, I'm really curious to see what this experiment will bring. This is just the beginning of what I hope will be a fun and educational series. I'll be diving into each distro in future videos, exploring the pros and cons, and seeing how they hold up from a Windows user's perspective. A pleb, if you will. One of the things that I'm looking forward to with this series is I anticipate being able to release an episode and have it be all the initial impressions, but then be able to respond to feedback from people that are like, oh, you should have tried this, or actually you missed this. I'm really excited for a project that can be community-based. And that's one of the things that I've heard is best about Linux and one of the things I'm most excited for, the sense of community. So I'm excited. I think this is going to be special, and I hope you'll come along with me on this journey. Thank you so much for listening to me. Yep, I'll see you in the next one.